Come on, put those hands together for Jesus. Come on. And I thank God for her. Come on now. Elder, minister, evangelist. She cries loud. She spares not. Come on, thank God real good for my first lady. Sister, an evangelist, and minister, and elder, Shirley Hunter. God be glorified. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. I just thank God for that, Elder. Thank you so much. I love you, I love you, I love you. Give an honor to God who is the head of my life, amen, and has been for over 30 years now, amen. Amen. There's none like them nowhere. And when you hear that, you have to know that. And I can tell you that I know that. It's none like them nowhere. Amen. Give an honor to our pastor. Amen. Who is the overseer of this house, but yet my husband. Amen. Who is the overseer of my house. Amen. I give honor to him. And I love him more than words could say, amen, to all the ministers, all the elders, and everyone in service today. God bless you, keep you, and thank you for being here this morning. You can be seated. Minister Alfonso, if you'll just give me one second, and I want to hear one song, but I want to say something about the song. I want you not to just sit there. I want you to envision the words. I want you to take the words in to your spirit. I want you to listen with a clear ear. Amen. So we just ask right now that God would anoint the ears to hear what thus said the spirit of the Lord. Amen. As we sit down and he stand up, we give him all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise for the things that he has done, the things that he is doing, and the things that he is yet to do. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Have your way today, Savior. Have your way today, Savior. And we just give it to you. If you could just turn it on. This is my prayer today. And turn this thing around. Yes, God. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. As you listen, just think about what you want Him to turn around for you. Amen. I'm calling on the name The name It changes everything Has he changed anything for you? Is there something else you need him to change for you? God, turn it around Yes, yes God, turn it around All of my hope is in the name All of my hope Yes Jesus is all we know little girl from the south side of Chicago he turned some things around for me coming from a drug addicted family alcoholic bound and I can look at my life to see how he turned some things around for me I know exactly where I could be today amen but I lift up my eyes and know that he's turned some things around for me If I didn't just tell you that, you wouldn't know it because he's turned it around that much. Amen. You have yet to see me come stammering here. Yes, I've been drunk, but not as she supposed. Amen. I thank him for it. You just got to hold on. A breakthrough really will come. And it keeps coming. Breakthrough after breakthrough. You know how they tell us? It's always something. What the pastor said. But it's always God. Amen. So it's one thing after another. One thing after another. One thing after another. But then I found there's breakthrough after another. Breakthrough after another. Breakthrough. Yes. Listen. He's up to something. God is doing something. He's doing something. Right now, all I'm saying, he is up to do you believe it? He is up He's to doing something. God is doing something right now. Right now, he is healing, healing someone. someone. He is saving someone. Saving God someone. Is doing something. It don't matter that they're not here. He Just think about someone. what he's doing he for you. Is 
He's healing somebody in a hospital right now. He's saving an unsaved loved one right now. Only because you believe. It's all about you. What are you believing for? He's moving some mountains. I've seen him do it. Some big mountains in my life. He's moved them. But it's all in the name of Jesus. All in the name of Jesus. All in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Nothing but Jesus. All of my hope. Yes, God. Power in the name. That's what they taught us. Power in the name of Jesus. If you don't know what to say, you just say Jesus. My pastor told me. You don't talk to the devil. You talk to God. I understood that clearly. So when it starts to bother me, Jesus, you see. Jesus, you know. Jesus, you do it. You do the rebuking. You do the moving. You do the changing. You can stop it, Brother Alfonso, minister. That's who, that is the God that I serve. Amen. And I just come to talk to you today about the God that I serve. And as I talk to you about the God that I serve, I hope somewhere in here you can see the God that you serve. Amen? Amen. Because so often we're hearing that people are following the big leaders because of the prosperity messages and all of those things, right? But then as I begin to listen to the Lord... What they're following is something that they want, okay? It's what they want. It's what they yearn for. It's what they're longing for. They want to be prosperous. They want to, you know, this this is what they want. So that's why they follow it, right? It's easy to sing you a song and make you want what that song is, right? So then I thought about it, and the Lord showed me that people are following the things that they want. And what profit a man to gain the whole wide world and lose his soul, amen? So we then begin to look at the saints. And we see in some instances, not at all instances, they don't have nothing. They ain't doing nothing. They depressed. They, under, they always look like they leaning over. They look like they don't serve a God that can provide. Who is going to follow you? Amen. So last night, Pastor put on Whitney Houston, what was it? Um, her gospel life, right? All we know is Whitney Houston, the pop singer, because, you know, I love Whitney Houston. Everybody in here know, Pastor knows, I love me some music. He said, we love music over here. I had to fight the devil because the first thing I heard was, I love music. Any kind of, you know what I'm saying? So we, he knows I love music, so this is no secret. But at this time, we were listening to Whitney Houston's, um, all the gospel songs she sang, and C.C. Winans was um, narrating it, and they were talking about all the things that she did, but everything she did, she always interjected that gospel because she just couldn't get away from it, right? So in one part, I heard them say that her mother told her as a kid when she got up to sing, Whitney, when you get up to sing, you bring them up to their feet and down to their knees, and that stuck with me. It like pinched me. You bring them up to their feet and down to their knees. Now, what can do that? What can make you stand up and praise the Lord and make you realize you're praising the Lord so powerful that then you drop to your knees and worship? And this is her telling her secular artist daughter to do that. Amen. Now, we see Sunday after Sunday where the ministers and the preachers, they come up, they sing, they do everything, right? But what can bring you up to your feet and drop you down to your knees? So that's what we're going to call today. What brings you up to your feet and drops you down to your knees? Because the first thing I said was, what's the offering? What are we offering? So this may be over some people's head that may not understand because they might not be old as us. But you, do anybody in here remember the Kirby 
the Kirby vacuum cleaner. You know, that Kirby vacuum clean, almost $3,000, and they come to your house, and they tell you, you know, somebody gave me your number. Let me just do a demonstration for you. And you like, you can come do the demonstration and clean my floors, but I'm not buying no $3,000 vacuum cleaner. Ain't no way that's not happening. Who buys a $3,000 vacuum cleaner? They come. Yeah, Shirley. She said to Shirley. They come to your house. They do all these things with the Kirby. They show you all the things that the Kirby can do. Oh, my God, your hardwood floor is no problem. It can buff it out. It can get that up. It can get the stains. Okay, good. Oh, wait a minute. Then comes an attachment. You can even shampoo the carpet. You can do this and that. Oh, wait, you've got one more attachment that can clean the dust mites out off your bed and everything. Oh, my God. This one here goes all the way up to the ceiling and get all your drapes, get all the dust. I mean, it, it, this thing does everything. Ain't nowhere in the world you don't want it, okay? Because you like, oh, my God. Oh, wait a minute. Then you take the top off and it drop down to a little bitty thing that you can carry around with you and you can do this and do that. Like it comes with several attachments. Do anybody know the Kirby? you seen it, right? Okay, so say, who bought one? Shirley bought one. Pastor be like, okay, you always trying to get something. They put you on a payment plan. They do all these things. That, so you get the Kirby. You get it. I got it. I got it. Then they come back to it. The new one, my new one. I was like, no, I already, you got me already. I got one. So then you using the Kirby when you first get it. My daughter, she loved it because this is a clean fanatic right here. We just doing everything with the Kirby. We do, using it, doing this and that. Then we look up and the Kirby in the corner. Yeah, the $3,000 Kirby. It's in the corner. Then we look up in the Kirby in the shed because we ain't even using the Kirby no more. Then we look up and the Kirby is on the front porch to go to the donation people. Yeah, because of all the attachments, right? All the things. And, and now we just forgot what the Kirby could do. We forgot how the Kirby could get all these things up. So now we got a vacuum cleaner for her room, a Swifter for his room. And we didn't, we're doing all these things when we had what could do everything. Amen. And got rid of it you see what I'm saying so now you still at another 3,000 because her vacuum cleaner probably 500 because she had to have what that Dyson what was it what yeah whatever that is she got and you know what I'm saying but when you add it up with all the vacuum cleaners that we have bought since the Kirby you're at three thousand dollars we should have just kept the Kirby because guess what the Kirby keeps upgrading and you can take it in lifetime warranty Lifetime, yeah, yeah, lifetime warranty. You could do everything with it. And you didn't gave the Kirby away. What is wrong with you? Somebody in here today didn't gave Jesus away. That's all I'm going to say. So we're going to talk about the attachments. What we want to talk about is first, I want to just take you through a few things that you should already be familiar with. I will give you the scripture, but you don't have to go to it. I'm going to read bits and pieces of it, and we're going to move this thing right along. We ain't going to be right long before you because we just want to get the point across that we have a Kirby. We just don't use the attachments to it. Amen. And somewhere along the way, somebody has put it in a corner. Somewhere along the way, somebody has put it even further in the shed. And somewhere along the way, somebody just gave it away all together. They just said, you know what? I don't even need the Kirby. It ain't doing number collecting dust anywhere. Jesus, what I thought you would do for me, you didn't do. Okay, God, I thought you wouldn't let that happen, but you did. Oh, my God, I asked you to open this door, but you closed it. So I'm just going to put you over to the side, and I'm going to go open some doors myself self amen I'm just saying it might be you it might not be so all we're gonna do is figure out where we fit in this scenario okay so we're gonna just talk about a few things that Jesus done the first miracle he did was change the water into wine he said to the people it's not my time what do you want with me and why they did not care that it wasn't his time his mama said, I want that water and the wine, and I want you to do it. So turn the water into wine. So Jesus went on, and he did it. But his mama asked him to do it, right? Okay. Then Jesus cured the nobleman's son. Once, this was, the first one was John 2, 1 through 11. 
The second one is John 4, 46 to 47. Once more he visited Cana in Galilee, where he had turned water into wine. There was a certain royal official whose son lay sick at Capernaum. When this man heard that Jesus arrived in Galilee from Judah, he went to him, listen, and begged him to come and heal his son who was close to death. Amen. Sometimes you can be so desperate for God to do something. You do beg. People say, you don't have to beg, God. I'm telling you, it says earnestly contend for the faith. And it told us to come boldly unto the throne. And sometimes we come begging and pleading. Now, if you're desperate, that's what you do. Amen. But we don't have enough desperation today. You understand what I'm saying? Everything is about me. Me Me.com. How I feel, how I'm wore out, how I'm tired, how this and how that, right? So who's pleading for the son? Who's pleading for the unsaved loved one? Who's pleading for somebody that needs your Kirby? You won't even loan it out. You, not even a good salesperson, you can't even say what the Kirby can do for you. I'm just saying. Then we come to Luke 5, 1 and 11. One day Jesus was standing by the lake. The people were crowding around him. I'm skipping over. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put into deep water and let down the nets and catch. Simon said, Master, we've worked all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets only because Jesus says so. See, sometimes it's not about what you've done or the route you've taken. Because that's another thing I heard in one of Whitney's song last night. And I told pastor, she said, every route I've taken has led me to regret. That's what her song says. The last song, every route I've taken have led me to regret. You understand? So, but because you said so, Jesus, I'm going to let down these nets again, only because you said it. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that the nets began to break. Now, you tell me, did it pay off to be obedient? They told us somewhere it's it's better to be obedient. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Now, that's what they told us. I don't know what they're telling y'all today. If I say, Chisa, stand up, Chisa, stand up. Are you going to stand up, Chisa? Then you didn't stand up. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Stand up, Chisa. You see what I'm saying? Now sit down. Stand up. I mean, everybody in here, why you got to tell me to stand up? You don't know what God going to do just because you stood up. Sometimes obedience is better than sacrifice. Jesus came to cast out an unclean spirit. This is in Mark 123. Jesus then, a man in the synagogue who was possessed by the impure spirit, cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus? You have come to destroy us. I know you are the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Now, this is the New International Version. Y'all know how King James don't do this, right? He said, come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out him with the shriek. The people were all so amazed and asked each other, what is this? Like, what's happening? A new teaching and with authority? Authority. He given us orders to, he's given orders to the impure spirits and they, they obeying him. Like, who is he to come and tell the spirit to leave? Like, he's doing it, right? The news about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. See, they following what they want. You understand what I'm saying? They're not following what they don't see. Now, they taught us that these signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. Do we have any believers in the house? Have you seen any miracles? Have you performed any? Has God done anything for you? Then what kind of advertising are you doing? We should be flooded. You understand? 
because we're going to get to that. Jesus cured Peter's mother-in-law, Mark 1, 30 through 31. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left, and she began to wait on them. The mother-in-law. Say, now, where was the mother-in-law? In Peter's house. You meet Peter made them want her there, but she was there. But then he thought enough to say, Lord, my mother-in-law, she's sick with fever. Now, we need her not to die. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. He went, he took her up by the hand, and she got up, and she began to wait on them. Just another sign of what Jesus would do, right? Yes. Countless people lived in 705 house. Okay. I mean, since we've been there. I, I don't even know if we can name how many. Yeah. We had a bishop come stay with us from Michigan. We had my sister-in-law stay with us and her daughter. We had these people right here stay with us. We've had, oh, my God, my nephew, my mother-in-law. Oh, your mother-in-law, yeah, stay with us. This is all at 705 because the running joke is 705 is a house of work. We don't get to rest. Amen? Yeah. This is what pastor tell us. Me and Mari be like, shoot, you know? Jamil could care less because he be up and down out there. He, it, it don't phase him like it phase the introvert. Then we had Devarion. Then we had Brenda come after she had the baby. Then we had my son, my late son's friend who came and he told Pastor, Pastor, say, how you doing? Where you staying? He said in Hotel Malibu. Pastor said, where's that at? I said, his car is a Malibu, his car. Hotel Malibu, where's, where's that at, son? I said, Pastor, his car. He said, oh, no. So then we got him. So I'm just, I'm just saying, sometimes you got to go to God on behalf of people. Amen? And it's because of your faith and because of your relationship that he'll change and turn some things around. Amen? Jesus healed the centurion's servant. When Jesus had healed into the Capernaum, the centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies home paralyzed, suffering terribly. Jesus said unto him, shall, come, shall I come heal him? The centurion replied, Lord, do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but the, just say the word and my servant will be healed. He said, Lord, you don't even got to come where I'm at because I already know. That if you, me, the centurion, if you just send the word, he going to be healed. Does anybody believe that you can send the word to where you want it to go? And it's going to hasten to perform that which it was sent to do? Amen. That's why I said it doesn't matter who you invited today or who I invited. I'll say that because it's about me. But it matters that I believe that I know what I've prayed and God is turning some things around. Amen. However he might do it. Say that. Say, I'm ready. However he might do it. Now, here you go. Jesus stilled the storm. He got into the boat and the disciples followed him. Oh, I'm missing to give him all the scriptures. I'm sorry, Pastor. Matthew 8, 23, 27, somewhere. He went to the boat and his disciples followed him. Suddenly, fury, a furious storm came upon the lake. So the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was asleep. Now, he sleep while the boat going on like this, you know. And everybody else, it's like, oh, my God, this boat is going to turn us all over. The disciples went and woke him up saying, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. He replied, you of little faith. I mean, you ain't got no faith. You what? Like, you really, you got the Kirby right here. You understand what I'm saying? And you scared. Like, you scared with Jesus right there with you. Now, I tell you this for a reason. 
Because it lets you know we're human, and it's okay for us to be scared sometimes. And it's okay because we don't have Jesus actually in the living flesh right here next to us. We have what we believe, right? Amen? And that's, we really believe in him just like that. I know me. I don't know about the elders and the preachers, but when I get up here and pray or sing, I close my eyes like it's just me and Jesus because if I look at you all, I'll be like, oh, my God, don't nobody know Jesus. I just close my eyes, and it's just me and Jesus, and I'm vision in him standing right here and I'm envisioning him holding my hand as I'm praying as I'm weeping as I'm calling out to him amen so you got him right there but you okay y'all just scared so then he got up and guess what he did he rebuked the winds and the waves and it came completely to a calm the men were amazed and then guess what they did they asked what kind of man is this even the winds and the waves obey him. Like, what kind of vacuum cleaner is this that can do all that? I mean, all that. Y'all ain't using none of the attachments. You understand what I'm saying? I remember coming from Cancun with Elder Paula. This is going to make y'all laugh. Me and her went on a marriage retreat. Okay, it was a marriage retreat for Monument of Faith. Pastor said, I'm not leaving the country. Her husband said, I'm not going. So we say, we're going to go. So we went together. We was the couple. But we weren't that couple. But we was the couple. We was like, we going to Mexico, okay? And we had a ball. I mean, we wasn't that couple. I'll make it plain. But we had a ball. We had the saints. All our, all our saints, all ours. We walking past them in their marriage retreat with their husbands and all that kind of stuff. We looking and laughing because we like, we is on a trip. <laughs> we then went to Mexico, okay? And I'm telling you, it was the bomb. I'm, I'm just saying, it was beautiful. It was so much fun. Say, but coming home was the plane ride from hell. I'm telling you. That plane. Now, I know people have been in turbulence. I know if you've ever been up in the air, you're turbulence and you shake or something. You know, they tell you it's normal. Well, the turbulence we had, the pain dropped. Stuff dropped. Now, we on the plane with nothing but saints from Monument. I'm going to tell you that. They screaming, oh, my God, the blood Jesus, God keep us. They doing everything. I laid my head back on that pillow because when I saw the stewardess falling to get the cut on her leg and the thing come rolling down the aisle, I thought this just might be it. It might be. This plane might be going down. It's not regular turbulence. I'm just telling you now. I laid my head back on that thing. I said, Lord Jesus, please forgive me of all my sins. Anything I've said or done since the day I was born to right now, God, just take me into heaven with you if I go down. But I'm asking, get me back home to my family. I didn't have it in me to scream. I didn't have it in me to holler because I just thought if Jesus, if you, all these saints on here, oh, my God. Lord, you can't be letting us go down. But nevertheless, if you do, your will be done. Just take me with you. I mean, just take me before we hit the ground. But it was like nothing you've seen. You understand what I'm saying? But it was like that storm. Then all of a sudden, boom, we hit something, and it just took us smooth sailing all the way home. This makes you all laugh because this is a little, it, I, you know, I might, you know, I said, I got to go to the bathroom. I'll say it as good as I could. When I went to the bathroom, I probably urinated probably about 20 minutes. Like I thought, like, is it going to stop? Like when? Like I don't, it seemed like every fluid in my body just was coming out. I don't know if it was my nerves. I don't know what, but I remember one of the saints jumping up and the lady saying, please be seated, ma'am. She said, I got to go to the bathroom. I was like, oh, my God. But when I got, I wanted to get off the plane, and I wanted to hit the ground. When we got in the airport, I said, oh, my God, I understand what that lady mean. I had time to think, am I still going? I couldn't believe it. But you're talking about calming the storm. See, what I'm trying to point out to you is these are things in the Bible, but if you pay attention, you can see where some things in your life can relate to the miracles that Jesus has already performed. But we just take things for granted. We don't see him 
like he is or for who he is. Amen. Okay. The two de demon acts, it says, when he arrived to the other side of the region, Matthew 8, 28 through 34. He arrived to the other side of the region. The two demon possessed men coming from the tombs, tombs met him. They were so violent, no one could pass their way. Now, I don't know about any of you, but I, I feel like living in Chicago and everywhere with Pastor and Minister Mario watching all, all the crazy stuff they watch. I, I don't know what to say. All the stories, you know, the, what, is the, what, is the, what is it? The, the snapped and the this and the that, right? All of those things, I, I just feel like we live in amongst some demon acts, right? They were so violent that nobody could pass them because in some places you look, you're like, mm, I ain't even going that way. I don't even want to walk past that. I don't even want to, mm, I don't even want to brush up against that. Oh, I see that coming out the door, so I'm just going to circle around and go a different way. Yeah. Amen. Thank God for discernment. But anyway, he said, have you come here to torture us before our appointed time? Some distance from the large herd of pigs was feeding. The demons begged Jesus, if you drive us out, send us to the herd of pigs. He said unto them, go. They had the nerve to ask him where to send him. Now, if a demon can ask Jesus something, how much more can you, his people? And guess what? He sent them to the pigs. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you see yourself anywhere? In these things that Jesus is doing? Jesus cured the prepare, par, par, paralyzed person. Matthew 9, 1 and 8. Jesus stepped into the boat across and came to town. Some men brought him a paralyzed man laying on the mat. Jesus saw their faith and he said to the man, Take heart, son. Your sins are forgiven. At this, some teachers of the law said to themselves, This fellow is blaspheming. Knowing their thoughts, Jesus said, now, why do you entertain evil thoughts? Why? Why do you entertain evil thoughts in your heart? Which is it easier to say, your sins are forgiven or get up and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, get up, take your mat, and go home. The man got up and went home. When the crowd saw this, they were filled with awe, and they praised God who had given such authority to a man. See, there's an authority that Jesus gives us that we don't use. What's going to bring you to your feet and take you to your knees? What's going to do it? What's going to do it? Yeah. Jesus killed, cured the woman with the issue of blood. A woman was there, Luke 8, 48. A woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. Now, for the women in here, you understand what a cycle does to you. And you understand that just that seven days can be a lot. So for somebody like me who have fibroids and different things on that line, it, it, it can be a lot. I remember my doctor, his wife was the gynecologist, and she said, you've learned how to operate on half a tank. My hemoglobin was falling, staying at a six, when that's just super low. That's actually transfusion. But every time they would build it, it would build up, my cycle would come again. So just imagine that that's just for seven days. And I'm talking clots and heavy, and, you know, wearing two, three pads. I'm just being honest because I have to put the picture in your head for you to understand what 12 years of bleeding could do to somebody. 12 straight years. But no one could heal her. Nobody. No physicians. She came up behind and touched the edge of his cloak. And immediately, the bleeding stopped. Then Jesus said, who touched me? Jesus asked, when they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you. But Jesus said, someone touched me. 
And I know the power has gone from me. So in this crowd, like Peter said, it's a, it's a whole bunch of us in here, Lord. You, we don't know who touched you. Anybody could have touched you. It could have been him, her, who. We don't know. Uh-uh. Somebody with a different kind of faith has touched me. And I'm going to tell you because I feel different from that touch. Somebody pricked me and they took something from me. They felt my virtue leave my body because of their faith. Then the woman seeing that she could not go unnoticed. Oh, shoot. I didn't got my healing. I got it. I got it. I mean, but it is what it is. If you like me, it's like, okay, Jesus, but I mean, I got it. I got it. What you going to do? You ain't going to take it back. I got it. Right? She came trembling, and she, what? Fell to his feet. What would bring you up and drop you down to your knees? You understand what I'm saying? And the presence of all the people, she told why she had touched him. And he had, she had instantly been healed. Jesus said to her daughter, your faith has made you heal. Now go in peace. All y'all in here in the crowd, y'all ain't pulled nothing from Jesus, but I bet I done walked up in here and pulled something. Amen. So you can sit in here Sunday after Sunday if you want to, but I tell you, when I touch, I'm getting something from them. Okay, I'm not coming up in here no Sunday, and I'm married to a preacher. My husband is a pastor. I live with him all, every seven days out the week. I know the life. I'm telling you now, I've said it to him. I've said it to individuals. If, you, if I ever don't see the life at home, you won't see me here. Because we one thing at 705 is we don't play with God. We just don't do it. You understand what I'm saying? So every time we come here, we're pulling virtue. We're going to make sure we get something from the messenger to the back door. Amen. Now, it's up to you to get your virtue. Now, you can sit here like I'm going to church because that's what I got to do. But or you can choose to get what you need. Jesus loosened the tongue of a man who could not speak. While they were going out, a man was demon-possessed and could not talk. He was brought to Jesus, and then the demon was driven out by the man who had been mute. And the crowd was amazed. Nothing like this they had ever seen in Israel. All I want you to hear now is we're talking about how the crowd is amazed. Amen? How the crowd is amazed. The virtue you pull, the things that God does for you, we're getting somewhere. We want the crowd to be amazed. Amen. Jesus healed the man at Bethesda. Now, it says invalid. I don't know what the King James says, but I don't think it says invalid. Sometimes later, Jesus went to Jerusalem for the Jewish festival. He said, one who was there had been I'm skipping over. One who was there had been in valor for 30, 38 years. When Jesus saw him laying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? I mean, I mean, do you want to? Like 38 years? Do, do you want to? Because some people are complacent with where they are. They're okay with it. You know what I'm saying? They say they want to heal and they say they want to change. They say they want something different. But, uh, you know, they, you know, so he said, do you want? So my thing is, if Jesus had to ask him, do he want it? Like, Jesus, you know he's laying right there. Why would you say, do he want it? Of course he want it. He's laying by the pool. So the man says to him, sir, I have nobody to help me. Nobody help me get in the pool. When the water is stirred while I'm trying to get in, someone else goes ahead of me. Then Jesus said, get up. Pick up your mat and walk. At once the man was cured and he picked up his mat and walked. Now what I got from this is you're sitting there waiting for somebody to help you. These people trying to get in the pool for themselves. They stepping over you. They going past you. They doing whatever they need to get in that pool while the water is stirred. So, I mean, if you don't get in there, that's on you. Me, I would have been grabbing somebody saying, drag me in there with you. And you would be dragging me. You, you would have known I wanted to get, not 38 years. Where does the desperation come from? You see what I'm saying? Where is the desperation? You'd have been gone, I'd have been snatching two or three people. 
Somebody, I'm going in. Help me. While you're getting in, just put my toe in. Just put a finger in. It's all about where your faith is. They said faith is a muscle seed, so who knows if he just got, could have got a tip, a fingertip or a toe tip. We don't know what would have happened while the water was stirred, right? But you land there saying, help me, please. I need some help. Folk will walk right past you and not care. So you got two things to do. You either going to help some people or you going to stand up and help yourself and be the testimony. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Wait a minute. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I wanted to find the one. With several things Jesus did, I'll just say it like this. Several things Jesus did, he told them. And don't go talking about this. Don't say nothing. Just let the people see you. Let the work speak for itself. You understand what I'm saying? Let the work speak for itself. Don't go tell nobody what I did. When they see and then they going to ask, then they going to know that Jesus has did something in your life. Amen. Like I just said, where I came from, the little girl from the south side, drug addicted family and all these things happening. If I don't open my mouth, you don't know that. I show no signs of addiction. I show no sign. Well, Pepsi every so often. I show no signs of alcohol, alcohol, alcoholism or nothing like that, which is very well capable. And I had no lie. Some days I feel like it. Okay, I mean, we just want to keep it real, right? But it's the love of Christ that constrains me and keeps me where I'm supposed to be. So I get drunk a lot, but not as you suppose, because I mean, hey, they told us if we open up the bottle, we don't know how to close it. So I just don't open it because of the Christ in me. You understand? So that's the walking testimony. So I don't have to tell anybody. And I'll make you laugh. We went to Cancun last summer, the summer before last, and um, my, 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 sister's best friend her husband was with us and he looked at me he said sis over there that's the bar over there I'm telling you that bar over there they got the real drinks the real ones they, they got the good stuff I was like the good stuff he said yeah I said babe I don't I don't drink you don't drink I said no he said what I said yeah you can't pay for what I got I'm giving you a real good time and I ain't had one thing in my body but fruit Amen. See, you can't have a good time in Christ. You let your light so shine that men can glorify your father, which is in heaven. Amen. So we know how to contain ourselves and we know how to have a good time and Jesus and leave feeling. Like we said, what, what was it? My birthday party, I think they gave me. And one lady came and she said, I, I have never been to anything like this, Shirley. She said, I, you know, I, I really, I had a really good time. I said, good. I said, guess what? And at any moment, we could have shut it all down if we had to and went right into prayer because that's how connected to God we are. So you have to have a confidence in Christ. You have to know who you are in him. And most importantly, you have to know all these attachments that come with him. And you have to sometimes throw everything, caution to win, and just simply believe it. Simply believe it. Simply believe, oh my God, he can do it. I'm telling you he can do it. I saw him do it. Did you know that I had this before me and I didn't know how it was going to get done? And oh my God, he did it. I had a sister-in-law in Texas tell me years ago, I think Mari was two or three. She said, girl, because she, my, my husband's twin, she's funny. She says, um, whatever, girl, because I don't know what you got with God, but girl, whatever it is, whatever you ask Jesus for, he'll do it. And, you know, I took it like a shot at first. But guess what? Then I took it as a compliment. I said, you know something? You might be on to something. Anything I ask him to do, he will do it. Because I think he told me that whosoever believes in me will do these works I have been doing. And even greater, he's with the Father. And what? I'm going to read that from the King James Version. Let me give it to you. Here we go. Because you need this in the King James. Okay? Right here. St. John 9. Jesus said unto him, 
I have been with you a long time. Now, these are the people that's following him. He's feeding the people with the loaves of bread. He calming storms. He doing everything. He got a big gathering, healing people with issues of blood. I have been with you a long time, and yet has thou not known me, Philip? See, because you can be in Jesus Christ a long time, but then you look up, and he's in the corner. He's in the shed. He's on the donation truck. He that have seen me have seen the Father. And, and, and how sayest thou then, show us the Father. You got the nerve to ask me to show you the Father and all these things I've done for you. Like, I don't know if he's ever done anything in your life. Because you know why? Because so many times we take the things that he do for granted. You think, oh, yeah, I got that done. Oh, yeah, I got that job. Oh, yeah, this worked out for me. And you just think it's you. So you don't give him the credit or the glory. You understand what I'm saying? So that's how he can be with you. And you can see all these things. But yet. You still going to ask to see the Father? You still want to see something else? You still want to see God do something else? I mean, you ungrateful. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Pastor told us we don't say I look to the hills from which come of my help, my help cometh from the Lord. But where is the Lord? He dwells in me. Now, some of y'all he might, but I mean, I know. I can say I know that I know that I know he dwells in me. Maybe you all have to take a survey or, you know, figure that out if he dwells in you. Because good and bad can't. I don't, I don't think so. Because when I would to do good, evil was always present, right? But I think that he, you know, when my foot almost slipped, he put, you know, he got me, right? Right? Okay. I mean, I mean I'm just saying. That's what I'm just saying because I don't know. I don't know if I see what I think y'all be saying. I don't know if I see it. Father in me, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth works. Believe me, this is in red, Pastor. Believe me that I am me. Now, Jesus is talking, but I'm saying surely. And the Father, and the Father in me. Or else, believe me for the very works. Verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall you do also. And greater works than these, greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto the Father. But whatsoever ye shall ask. That's why I took what my sister-in-law said and I ran with it. Okay? Whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do it, that the Father may be glorified amen that the father may be glorified in the son if ye shall ask anything in my name i will do it so she said whatever you ask god he'll do i said girl you're right and it's been some years now that i just hang on to that and when i'm at my lowest of my lowest or when i just think i'm at the end of my rope and like they taught us reach above the cut place you understand i reach above the cut place and i say if you don't pull me up i'm sinking if you don't do this it's not gonna happen and i just turned my head and my knees gave me a plaque that says uh give it to god and go to sleep i look at it every single night and say okay you got that because i don't know i told pastor not too long ago i know what i'm do i'm just gonna talk to god i don't, I don't that's what that's just what i do yeah, amen. Amen. and i have an insurance yeah. that he's gonna do it so the unsaved the unsaved loved ones the ones that are sick the people that call for prayer this morning one um that comes to visit us say i'm in the hospital blood pressure 260 over one something i said we got you since we praying can you make sure i'm in on the link be on the link we praying we don't just say we praying when we pray, when we say that. We don't, we don't mouth work over here. This is why so many challenges and so many fights and so many things, because it is a deliverance ministry. And we stand behind a deliverance pastor. 
So I leave you with this. Pastor said, I don't care what you're doing, girl, but you better get it together because you're going up there. My daughter got mad at him. She's, he said, you're going up there even if it's in a wheelchair. So that's what he told me. I'm telling y'all what my husband told me. That's what my husband told me. Now, he ain't going to say pastor. That's what my husband said because my husband is a jokester. But my neighbor got sick Sunday, and we ended up, me, ended up having to spend the night with her. So when I come home Monday, I'm thinking, dang, did I sleep on the couch wrong? Because, ooh. You know, then last year around this time, I started having spasms in my back. So I started, it started, so I was like, oh. So my brother, he was shot in the back. He gets spasms all the time. And me and my sister laugh and joke him, be like, you old man, because he said, oh, oh, oh. So I told my sister, I ain't going to say nothing else about him ever again, because I understand why he is, because everything I did, I was like, oh. Oh, dealing with kids. Oh, you know, this went on for two days. Pastor, said, you need to stretch, cause he's a, you know, what 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 do we call him? He is a, a what, a health maniac. Ain't nothing wrong. You need to stretch. I said I did stretch, but I can't. I can't. I can't. I, 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 I'm telling you, it was it was bad. I, I couldn't turn. He said, look at you. You can't turn your head. I said, I, can't, I don't know. I don't know what happened. This is Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday, I'm crawling. My niece Danielle says, Auntie Cheryl, you okay? I said, girl, I don't know. But I'm, I'm fighting through it. I'm fighting through it. Say, this is where I had to break the family thing because I can't be a pill popper. So I said, I'm going to have to take somebody's pills because I can't get rid of this. Yes, somebody's. That's why they call me the pill popper. My daughter says, pill popper. You can't do that, Mom. So I'm like, I'm going to I'm gonna have to call my brother. Tell me. He said, ooh, I feel bad for you because I know how that works. I was like, send me something. I wake up Thursday. This is the first time pastor hearing this because I intentionally didn't tell him because I didn't want the husband and him to stand up and the protector and the provider to be like, no, 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 that's it. That, no, uh-uh, you, you, you're not doing this. I got this because I knew that the Lord wanted me to do it. I wake up, so I have blister right here, blister right there. And I'm like, what the heck? And I'm just, the pain is excruciating. So I take a picture. I send it to my doctor. He's like, oh, my God, girl, that's, he said, preacher. He said, that's the shingles. So I said, oh, DLC. I got to preach Sunday. He said, oh, my God, that's painful. I know it's painful. It's, it's like an excruciating pain that you can't really explain. It attacks the nerves. So, like, to do this hurts. To do that hurts. It's like you just don't want to be touched. So I go to my niece to get my hair braided yesterday because sometimes I don't care how old you are. You just feel like I just want to go where my mama at. So I go to my mom, my mom comes in there, and I'm just like, look, mom. And then I start crying because my daughter, I didn't show anybody nothing. I just knew what I looked like, but I didn't let them know anything. So I went to my mom and said, mom. So I showed my mama. When I showed my mama, I started crying because it's like, okay, I'm at my mom's. Mama, look. Um, I can cry. I can be a girl, a little girl. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, so she tells my niece, don't be braiding her hair tight. They might get in her head. Just, you know, don't do it. So I'm like this. I'm like, yeah, treat me right. Don't hurt me because my niece, you know, she takes things out on me. She'll pull me and yank me and all of that. But I'm just like, oh, my God. So my mama says, no, don't be pulling on her. So I'm crying, and I'm doing it, and I'm just like, oh, my God. So I come home, my hair all braided, I'm doing this. So I'm walking. So pastor said, uh-uh. I walk past him, right? I know what you need. He picks me up. Yeah, 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 yeah. He picks me up, and he cracks my back. He said, you just need to be lying up. My daughter's like, daddy, no. Stop it, daddy. So I'm like looking at her like, I told you don't say nothing. So we still ain't told him. So I get up to the bed. I'm t I took it. I took it. I, man, I can take some stuff. I took it. See, you got, in Jesus, you got to be able to take some stuff. Amen. You got to be able to take some things. You can't faint, by the way. Especially in 705, there's no fainting there. You, you don't even get the option. 
Okay, it's like you better crawl to where you're going. You don't get that option. Like, we live with that. We live with a trainer that is like, "Uh uh-uh. You take them punches, but listen, let me patch you up because you're doing this. Like, we got a real trainer. You don't get to, you know, throw in a towel. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not even an option. So, I'm standing there, and so then my daughter says to me later that night, she says, "Uh, well, Mom, you look better. (laughs) Look, y'all. Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't hardly move, could I, the whole week. Danielle, you saw me, quiet. I couldn't walk. Everything was, oh. And I, I said, Mari, girl, look. I could do it. Like, oh, my God, this morning. She said, Mom. I said, yeah, maybe the cracking of the back help. I was like, maybe he did. I got my own chiropractor, but I just didn't need to be chiropractic yesterday. But. Maybe I did. I don't know if it was the anointing. Honest to God. Because I felt better by the time I got in the bed. And what I get out of that is sometimes what hurts or what you think is not good may be exactly what you need. I'm able to move up here and work around and do this. And God, honest to truth, strike me dead behind this pulpit for a full week. I could not turn, move, or bend without saying, ooh, ah. He said, Elder Paul is going to laugh at you tomorrow if you walk up there like that. That's how I was walking, like this. Like, ooh, ooh. I sound like an old man. I was making the sounds like my brother, and I felt bad because I had te- we tease him all the time. Be like, boy, what is wrong with you? And he said, I'm so sorry for you, sister. I know what you feel. I'm going to send you this, and I'm going to send you that. And, you know, but my doctor called me in a prescription. <laughs> so I leave you with this. Pastor said last night when we were watching the thing, at some point you come to a fork in the road. And so I looked at him and thought he, he won't stay out my message. So it just confirmed that I knew that I was supposed to do what God was. Now, y'all know they call me the carnal Christian because I do listen to music. I'm just going to be honest. So I heard the song, Whenever You Call Me, I'll Be There. Whenever you call me, I'll be there, yeah. Whenever you want me, I'll be there, right? But let me just tell you what the word says. The word says, This is our fork in the road, love's last episode. There's nowhere to go, oh no. You made your choice. Now it's up to me to bow out gracefully. Though you hold the key, whenever you call me, I'll be there. Whenever you want me, I'll be there. Whenever you need me, I'll be there. I'll be around. I knew just what to say. The Lord always knows what to say with us. But now I found out today that the words just slipped away. We just put it in the corner. We put it in the shed. We put it on the donation truck. But there's always a chance that a tiny spark will remain. And sparks turn into flames. And love can burn once again. If we just remember the one thing that Jesus did that made you say, Lord, I want to be saved. That one thing. If you can just go way back to remember what made you do that. That thing can fester up and become a fire burning, and just turn your heart right back to Jesus. And guess what? He said, I'll be there. He's always waiting just for you to return. Amen? So the message is for the believer and the message is for the unbeliever. The message to the believer is just to remember who God is and remember all the attachments that come with the God that you serve. The things that he can do. The things that he has done. The things that he is yet going to do. Just remember. Then be quiet 
and let the people see. Because if you walk as an advertiser and if you become the salesperson like the Kirby person and you get to show them all the things that can be done just from following this one Jesus, easily you will pay $3,000 for that vacuum cleaner because it's going to suit all my needs. Oh, my God, I'm sick in my body. Oh my, He can heal me. Wow. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, I need this. He can provide for me. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He can save me. He can deliver me. My daughter said to me yesterday, Mom, you know I'll dance for you. I said, I know you will. I said, but I just want you to be there tomorrow. So I asked a friend to come help me today. And, Joy, if you can just move back. I'm going to leave you with this last song, if it's okay, Pastor. And then I'm done.